going to try and explain how we translate elevational views of an aircraft and choose and pick a perspective angle that will replicate that uh, aircraft in such a way that um, you are choosing the angle and it's not being dictated by a photo. So what I've done uh, first up is uh, for tonight's sketch we're looking at a de Havilland Beaver. From the internet I found some blueprints and from those blueprints uh, I've scaled those out in a printout um, to match the correct size. So you'll probably see here the length of the top view matches the length of the side view. Sorry just there. I've subdivided a grid over that um, elevational view. It gives me an opportunity to block out the aircraft in scale once we work in perspective and choose our perspective. So that was the first part of the exercise. You can see down here also the front view has been um, broken up with that type of grid. Also for reference a couple of uh, aircraft um, perspective views and an example of a quick biro layout that I did today um, to explain uh, this principle. You can see it's not exactly the same as the aircraft uh, in the drawing but it uh, represents a way in which we build up this sketch using um, the, the grid pattern and the blocking out pattern. So put those aside. First up, uh, understanding the principles of, of um, building things in perspective. Essentially we can start with um, just the basics of a cube. So say for example, three centimeter high cube. And I'm using a ruler here just to explain this principle. Now a square, sorry, a square or a cube. To find the center of this square, we can subdivide by using the diagonals. And to um, find the center now of the side edge, we subdivide the square in such a fashion. This allows us now to extrapolate and develop a second square of the same size by basic geometry. And using this principle, we can slowly start to build up square by square. And here, for example, we subdivide that again and find the center of that one, which isn't necessary. But in this instance, I'm going to use it to build up my horizontal midline. So once we have this pattern, we can literally keep growing the number of squares here by equal distance without using the ruler and just by projection. See what I'm doing there. And so this can carry on. Now, understanding this principle of subdivision allows us to translate this into perspective. So very roughly, if I draw uh, a vanishing point, so two points on a horizon. If everyone's familiar with two point perspective, this is the horizon line. From that horizon line, we can draw um, our viewpoint and a point of perspective. So everything vanishes to those vanishing points. In the distance, I've chosen a very central type square here. So now this same principle of subdividing the squares works in this view as well. So here, for example, I would draw a, an ellipse. An ellipse would dictate um, the size of our square. So what we understand with a circle is that a nice round circle face on, as we start to tip that circle away from us, it becomes an ellipse. So we start to get shape like that. So say for example that was an axle of a, of a wheel, I'll draw it sideways, if this was a wheel. We'd have a minor axis and the axle of the wheel running in this direction. So say for example we had a, a wheel on this face, travelling on this face of the square, we could have a, an ellipse here and the minor axis of that ellipse. So we have the major and minor axis of the ellipse, so we've got an ellipse, major and minor axis. The minor axis of the ellipse will allow us to 
dictate that angle. We now have a reference point for our second part of our square. So now using the subdivision, we subdivide our square. We can find back to our vanishing point through the midpoint. We can extrapolate from that and then establish the blocks required to create multiple squares in this view. So in this instance, I can keep going. And you'll see these squares will start to diminish as they get closer and closer to the vanishing point. So the size of the squares get smaller and smaller. Using this principle now, you can probably see where I'm leading to with this. We can choose a view that will relate in perspective to the grid pattern that we've created for the aircraft and we've split it up equally in that fashion. And as I mentioned before, it's imperative that you get the same size top view and side view to be able to lay out that grid accurately so that you know that what translates in a, in a plan view also translates in an elevation view. So now it's a matter of deciding on what perspective um, we pick. This is a relatively low view, so you could imagine here if I draw another line off into the distance here and my ellipse with a minor axis and I can also demonstrate here with ellipse templates the reason the ellipse templates have um, they have minor axis points to help you guide and choose and select an ellipse. In this instance here for example we'd be looking at about a 35 degree uh, ellipse. The size would need to be a little larger. Let's have a look here. So 35 degree ellipse and I would be able to line that up using the minor axis of the ellipse to get an accurate ellipse in that blocked area there. So this is by using guides. You can see now that ellipse translates across to the vanishing point. So you can imagine an axle of a wheel starting at the center, traveling off to the vanishing point. That helps dictate that ellipse and it also guides and um, establishes the angle of the ellipse. And here it also establishes the angle of the box. So in this particular view, we're looking down upon something. So if I block that in and use my other two vanishing points to finish off the cube, we get a cube that sits in space. And again, I can try and establish an ellipse that fits into this surface here, probably a little tighter there. That's a 30 degree and uh, maybe a little larger. There we go. And in the top view, we'd probably be establishing a much shallower ellipse there. So this gives us a, the, the premise or the basis of our perspective grid. And as I've shown before, the subdivisions of the squares allows us to establish how many squares we um, travel back down into, into the back of this um, grid arrangement. So, knowing this principle, we can apply that now to finding a perspective that suits us for this particular aircraft. So, just throwing a few ideas out there. From a very high viewpoint, so from a, a vanishing point off in the distance here, we could do something like so, where, for example, the the nose of the, the aircraft um, so that would be the front area where the propeller sits in the spinner you could have a very high uh, sorry a low angle looking up at the aircraft with the wings of course traveling in in this direction with the vanishing point allowing us to establish the wings so we can draw down from above so again like the previous sketch we have our vanishing point and bring it really close to the front and a long distance away so here I 
I can establish a, an aircraft that we're looking down upon, similar to the previous sketch that I, that I did. So. And so by doing some basic layouts, I can establish which way I want to draw this plane. We can even work from, from the rear, for example. So say for example we're looking from below up at an aircraft, we will have our, our uh, horizon line, actually we'll put a low horizon line. We'll go up to a point up high. Here for example we could start with the tail of the aircraft and all the wings at the back, just to run very rough here, and then translate that. So you can start to see we can we can set up a view depending on where we choose our vanishing point. Now for this de Havilland Beaver, um, the viewpoint that I originally chose, which was this one here, you can sort of see it was a fairly high viewpoint looking down on the aircraft. Um, we're going to try and do something different now. So using my reference images, I'll keep those out, move my guides out of the way. Um, I'm just going to do a couple of quick thumbnails and sort of see whether we can do one looking over this way. So look, look at the aircraft from the opposite side, for example. So I'm trying to get a feel for what angle we're going to be looking at this at. This is just eyeballing it. So again, my vanishing points here, one off in the distance off the page. I'm trying to sort of see, well, I'd like to see the, the window under the wing this time and the strut of the aircraft. And maybe an opportunity to bring the floats down a little lower. So maybe a perspective along these lines which means the aircraft is actually flying in the opposite direction and uh, building up a sketch based on this so using that as our principle I'll try to lay that out now so what we've got here a vertical line if I look at the front of the aircraft we've got one two three four a total of five squares going down the, the front of the aircraft. And what I'm going to do is also introduce a bit of th three-point perspective here. So in subdivide this into five equal lengths, and I suppose we could do that with a rule. Three, four, five. So this is now the basis of our perspective grid, and I've sort of said we'll try and keep it low. So. I'm build up the line here, take this to a vanishing point off in the distance, and this to a vanishing point off in the distance, and this one right over here on the far end of the page, and this one right over here to this point here. Remember I'm doing this freehand now. Essentially we can block the grid out by bringing those lines to our... So one, two, three, four, and we need one more at the bottom here. So. So that's essentially our the perspective that we'll be working to. Um, I don't need this now. So now establishing the side view of this aircraft, and I'll be working in reverse now. This will be interesting. So um, let's start with a circle here, just to sort of set our, our width. I'm estimating our square. I shouldn't actually use the rule. I'll try and eyeball this. I'll set up a set of squares there. And on this side here, I'm again eyeballing this set of squares there. So that gives us a bit of cube height. What I can do is with a third angle um, perspective or a three point perspective, I'm sorry, is start to taper these lines in towards a point down at the bottom of the page and that'll also add some more dynamics to the view 
um, in this instance here we've got one, two, three, four, five boxes, one, two, three, four, five. And we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine sort of towards the end. So now using that principle of, of subdivision, I'd probably use the top um, square to help subdivide this space. I'm getting another line, sorry, from the center point all the way through to the vanishing point. Now this, oops, gotta be very careful here. This now dictates our second point here. I'm going to subdivide that again. Here we go. That. We've got our next midpoint. You can see I'm projecting, creating next grid reference we've got nine of these to do so back through there back through there you can see I'm ever so slightly trying to taper these to a, a third vanishing point but to try not to complicate things I may keep it parallel so we've got one two three four five to number six you can start to see the cubes are getting smaller so you just identify the individual cubes one two three four five last One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, one more. Okay, it might sound a little tedious, but what we've now just done is established a grid fashion of, of nine points or nine cubes that are slowly tapering off with the vanishing point. This side, we can work on our um, width which comes from the front view so if we're looking at the center point you got one two three four five six cubes going this direction we see what I'm doing going from the bottom corner through the midpoint three four the bottom corner through the midpoint line so essentially established the width of the aircraft or one half of the aircraft there by projecting these lines out into space here we'll be, be able to establish where the um, main part of the of the uh, wings go now next trick here is to translate what we've got in the um, elevation view, the side view, onto the side of our box. Now, again, I could make it so the aircraft is flying away from us, which is a, was an opportunity. I'd like it to be... Actually, yeah, why don't we do that? We'll do it so that it's flying flying away from us. So I'll actually work in, um, in the direction that this, this plane is flying, so that we're not working back to front. So in this instance, if I work from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, the first cube down here, we've got two down. So this is one, two down. We're fairly much one in, two down. Halfway forward, we've got the spinner. And that's this point here of the aircraft. So we can translate that onto the surface. It then pops up ever so small. And you're looking at the reference cube here now the bottom I've got a, um, a line which would you translate that up to there and the other point here is a vanishing point all the lines go to the vanishing point that starts to become the cowling and it's important that we show that so that we know that when we translate that into a circle we get that right shape of the nose it then fairly much transitions to a straight section this comes down at an angle got the first split line of the side view and we travel just a little bit further about halfway there into that cube and then we've got the windshield and that travels up to about midpoint 
look at our third square along, one, two, three, up to about there. Rolls over the top, we've got one, two, third square, so that's really right over the top. And just bring that round. Fourth square, we're dropping down to about a point there. And then that's the root of the wing. And then we've got the fuselage traveling down to a point. And this isn't quite the full square at the rear here. It's about halfway, if not a bit further. So on that center line, we are probably ending up at a point about here for that tail. And so now we can sort of see that that is a straight line or fairly much straight line from there to there. So I'll just draw that through. So with the straight line now, I can transition the, the base of the, of the tail down and the rest of the body down the bottom. We just sort of gently block that in. We also have between second here, we've got this rudder detail lower part of the of the so we've got one two three in one two three on the third one in we've got this detail just popping in up through here and I'm trying to find this point here so one two three four cues one two three four back at a point about halfway is where the tail starts to transition and we've got the two squares one two it's about halfway up the square which is about right there and we're going to transition that up through to a point here on the second square so this will start to curve up and then we've got the tail coming up around through here and transitioning down so we're going to have a And down to the tail here. So we're very close up on the on the on the tail, so it's a, a close up rear view of this De Havilland Beaver. Now, the rear um, horizontal stabilizers, the rear wings, they begin around this section here, so we can establish that. Now. Up on the main body here, we also have to realise that the width of the aircraft is about one one of these squares high um, and wide, sorry, but about the, the width and height. And so if we were to, to communicate that across back to our vanishing point, it starts getting very messy, but bear with me. So this point here, there's a point on the, the grid which establishes the width of one cube, so half of that is going to establish how wide our aircraft is going to be. And in this instance, here at the at this point, I'll flare that off into the distance and flare that off into the distance. I'll be coming out at about one cube width. start to draw the sections of the aircraft in. This section come out remember all these lines go back to the vanishing point. So the width of the aircraft is being established here so here at the nose I've got to come out at least a point here and that is the windscreen level so we're widening up the aircraft now. The nose is going to be round and that's going to be an ellipse and the ellipse is going to sit fairly much on the minor axis of that. So if I draw that in, then we have our cowling cover second ring there, a little scoop under the underside, and this here is essentially where our wing route will sit, the width of the aircraft is about there, so now we can block in 
a bit more shape to this plane and have it taper to zero here. Chosen quite a tricky view with the geometry, but you can see where I'm getting at. Now the rudder will have a, a split at the top, the vertical cut down, and again all horizontal lines go back to the vanishing points. Now in this instance, the I'll get this picture out. The rear horizontal stabilizers are one, two, three, four, four cubes wide, and they're starting on the eighth grid line, which is this line here, which is this line here. So they start there. They're going to be four cubes wide. So if I subdivide four cubes down the bottom here. One, two, so that's two. And on that side, I have to continue on here. If I find the midpoint of those ones and project a line through here, I can establish another cube there. So this is, sorry, this is midpoint. One, two, one, two one and we're going to go up through another two and we transition that to this vertical line which is the one running down and that'll give us fairly much the midpoint of our horizontal stabilizers so again on this one translate that across so here is the point we're looking at terminating the wing and here is the point we're terminating the wing. We project this up to the aircraft. And at this point where this is all happening, this is the center line, this is this point here, which is the center of that horizontal stabilizer. I'll pull this, this image out here. It's that center line of the grid. I know that at a point out here from the perspective, and I might use a ruler just to be a bit more accurate on this one, so I will project through from a point here to a point here. So that now establishes our rear wing angle. So by just adjusting and guessing, I suppose, the width of the, of the wing, this travels right to the very end of the tail. And that travels across to the end of that tail. And the front travels to our point that we've determined here on the grid, which was, sorry, side view. So if you can imagine here watching, looking down here, this is sort of a cut down there. I've said my wing root starts about there. So just forward of the split in the rudder. And we bring a line up to there and on the opposite side, up to there. Now you can put a bit of airfoil shape. So you can see now we're getting that beaver tail correctly arranged. I'm starting to darken up the lines a little so I can see what's going on. Now the next tricky thing is the main wings. And so we've got ourselves in an interesting situation here where the looking at the plan view. So we've got our squares here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've got our nine cube, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've established the, the uh, rudder establish the tail horizontal stabilizers again with the perspective flaring back to the vanishing point so that dictates those angles we're now trying to establish a wing in perspective and the tricky thing is with the wing it actually has a bit of um, dihedral meaning it a bit of an upturn I think here it's, it says a half a couple of degrees uh, coming from the root up to the top now I'm going to try and replicate that here um, the, the tip of the wing let's say the center point 
the center point here of the, the where the wing root begins, traveling out to the tip. That is situated one, two, three. It's probably about two and two and three quarters of the way along second square, two and three quarters. So two and three quarters is just about there. That's where the wing position is. And again, using the rule, I'm trying to be a little more a little more accurate. Bear with me. So we draw in a line. So that's the horizontal line that a horizontal wing would be on. Um, we now need to establish from our ground plane. So where's that point? Translate that down to here. We can then establish that. What I'd like to do is use the ground perspective to establish how many blocks we need to travel across to get the length of the wing. In this instance, we've already done that calculation. This is our midpoint line. It's the center line of the, of the aircraft. We have one, two, three, four, five, six. So we've already established six along there. We've established one, two along here, and we can continue on with those. So quickly, I'm just starting to use the ruler just to make it a little easier. Um, through the center line here. One. And okay, so we got one, two, three, four, another two will establish the position of our main wing end point. So, and one more through there, literally off the page, just about off the page. But because of that, I can sort of ju just fudge that in there. So essentially that means we've got this point here. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. That is the midpoint of our aircraft, and then we've got this point here. Translate that back to the left vanishing point. We've got a point over here which determines the full span of the wing in perspective, but that is just the horizontal line. So that would be as if we were drawing the horizontal line through the aircraft wing up to there. Now, these points can be projected up. Now, to the wing area and as we said this is the line that we're going up to we're trying to keep parallel with all our vertical lines we're getting to a point there now to get this dihedral um, effect we're going to come up a couple of degrees off off that uh, that vertical point and the same here I'm going to try and keep that in perspective so using my vanishing point we will find that same point over there, which is slightly lower. And if we were to now translate that down, I can draw a line there and a line there, which will give us our ever so slight wing angle. Now the next issue is drawing the wing in perspective. So here we've got the six cubes along, one, two, three, four, five, six rounded tip slightly over the sixth um, uh, grid line and slightly over there so if we pick a point slightly in space there and there we then have approximately one and a bit cube width aircraft wing and that starts two um, two cubes across and you can see this distance here is probably about a quarter two and a quarter cubes so if we go two and a quarter which will be here that'll be the beginning of the wing the front and then we've got one two three and a half three and a bit more so three and a bit more is the, the back end of the wing here now the wing shape is is that teardrop shape that we have in a in an aircraft wing so what's going to happen here we're going to have a point at the front which is lower and also the taper in the wing i'm going to translate that across its length now the interesting thing is this point up here also goes to the vanishing point. So if I draw through so, and we'll use this one here now. We'll grab that point there, and we're going through that point of the wing. I'm just obscuring parts of the main wing actually with the body, so bad choice of view. 
but it goes to show you can actually construct any view you desire. So now running these three points in parallel up to the wing and back to the vanishing point. So I'm going to draw that out here. And this one here will be that's actually inaccurate, sorry. It wouldn't be to the vanishing point because we're following this new angle here, which is the wing angle. So I'm going to be running parallel, somewhat parallel to that, a bit of a flare, parallel to that point. And that tail end looks about right. And now here we've got this teardrop shape that we need to replicate. That teardrop will wrap wrap along the wing like so. And I'll just tidy that up a bit. So now we've got the and I'll put a bit of if we look at the perspective along here, we can get a bit of a grid line happening on the underside of the wing. Establishing now where our floats go is the last big challenge here. So the floats on this aircraft, they're within the center line here, two boxes across and we've got sort of a, a pentagon shape sitting in through the float. Two boxes along here is where the struts are, so one and a, one and a half nearly. So if I go one and a half in, that's where my strut position is. And that's now going to travel out and we're going to measure one and a half to the center point of each of these pontoons. So this is one and a half. This is one and a half. So by dragging those lines back to, it's a lot of lines and you've got to keep your head amongst all of this stuff. But if I come now from that, sorry, that point there down and across to these two, going off of the perspective, so that point down off to here, so what have we got? We got one and a half, it's this line here. That'll be where my um, strut engages with the pontoon of the aircraft. And again on the other side we've got one and a half, so that's this line here. So in reference to the plane, that's where our strut system occurs. Okay. The next issue is determine the height of these pontoons. So if we look at our grid again here, we've got the one, two, three, four, five, six high, one, two, three, four, five. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five high. The pontoon sits within the bottom fifth squares and the fourth squares. And we can now map out on the center plane where that pontoon sits. So coming from nearly the tip of our one, two, three. So we've got fourth box here. Just about there is a pontoon. I'm doing this on the center line of the aircraft. So that's the center of the pontoon. I'm gonna translate that one, two, one, two, three, four, five, and five and a half. So five and a half, we come down to a point about there. got a bit of a curvature to it, always remembering the vanishing point off into the left here. So a bit of curvature and remember I'm mapping this to the center line or the center plane that I'm drawing on. I mean here we go down a little and it's going to cut through. So cut through the center point there. We arc down in under there. We're coming back up again. There's a bit of a step and a steep climb. Okay, so that's the profile of the pontoon on the center plane. I now need to project that out to this point here and to this point here. So using that principle, and this is the highest point on our pontoon, I'll throw a line out here and one out here. And again, with this pontoon at the rear, the point here, we will find that Translate that across to our center point here and up. So there we're saying that that's the 
resting spot of that pontoon there. And on this one, if we look, look at this reference line, where those two cross will be vertically and sorry coming across through here that will be the tip of the um, starboard pontoon and this will be the, the tip rear tip of the port pontoon and again we'll use those reference lines so now drawing this in Having a quick look at the shape of the pontoon, it sort of shows here through cross sections that it's sort of a, a flattened uh, pentagon. So here we can start to draw in that shape to give us a bit of a profile. And the same happens here. So and then we start to translate that to the front. Flaring that forward. We've got that curvature in it. The curvature comes down off off that point here, so it comes down up. A bit more roll on the nose. steep and you've got this pontoon shape rolls around the top just to give us a bit of a feel for what this pontoon is doing and so that's port pontoon we translate it across to the other side where our point midpoint is here front Picking up that point here, it's about there. I'm trying to darken up these lines so we can actually see what's going on. And off this center point we can establish that that rolls around like so set up the chine lines and those pontoons and so that's a, a line through there a bit more height on that one chine line through here so what I tend to do in these situations is try to shade some of this to make it look a little clearer as to what's going on Now that strut was the strut coming off the, the front. A bit of foreshortening happening there, so I'm just going to stretch that out a bit. I'm going to imagine that struts across the width of the aircraft there. It comes back to the plane at a point, as we see here, just under the window, and the window sort of goes along here, ducks down. Again, with that vanishing point, I've established that that window horizontal there comes up like so. We've got the little spreader bar there. We've got our secondary window, so if I go one, two, three, third line, third line down, we've got a, a point probably just about here where that window sits. And again, in perspective, And we've come out from the side of the aircraft and we project that out on a point a bit further out. So really the window is sitting about here. Because we've got to take into account the width, not just project straight onto the face of the aircraft. And the opposite window on the other side would be in a position similarly offset. So this is the surface that we'd be looking at as being the window. Sorry, this other front window would have been shifted a bit further forward. Underside of the wing. I'm going to start shading this wing in a bit because uh, we just 
need a bit more definition. So there we go there. This wing would probably also be in shade, so here we shade the underside of the wing. And this is a point where I've tried to start to block out my shapes. A bit of shadow perhaps with the sun coming from the top and roll in around underneath. Tail. I'm going to start to get a bit of definition some of the spars in the rear rudder still following the curvature of the um oh sorry the vanishing point bring those into play this being a square bodied like square sections through here or rectangular sections here you can see that in the front view it's a fairly blocky type aircraft you can bring those sections down through here and you'll see that the underside has got flat surfaces Now the next uh, of the two struts sitting behind is so they're going to be coming out at a steep angle here to the aircraft. And on the opposite side, I'm going to translate that across. We get we can put the rungs and the ladders on there. Now, there is a, a wing strut, and this is where I'll bring in the reference images. The wing strut here starts just under the window and extends probably at a 45 degree angle nearly. You can sort of see that in the front view. The wing strut here travels up to the wing root, so that is one, two, three and a half. You can find that point here, one, two, Three and a half, travel along to the wing and translate up. Hold on, I'm getting confused here. It's one, two, three and a half. So at a point projected up onto our aircraft there, I'll use a ruler for this and we come down with a wing spar and the opposite side you won't be able to see. So essentially now we've blocked in our aircraft. We can put in small fins I think on this particular model here. We have, um, I don't know what they call these little details, but details on the fin and to add those here would be a matter of sort of coming in a little distance off the rear and projecting that off to the front. And again in perspective The same on the opposite side, sort of little guess as to we could map that out and find exactly the same points and position that. But here I'm just using my eye for the sake of speed and getting this out. And remember, those lines all come back to the vanishing point, so and so I can color that in, make that rather dark. So through the methods of construction you can see here how to build up a sketch. Um, I could use my circle guides again to try and establish a nice nose to make that look a little neater. I've got a lot of sizes here to choose from. The angles aren't right. So here, probably go the next size up. Remember, I'm following the minor axes along this axis of my guide. And so that says it's a 40 degrees ellipse. So that means in the larger size, if I choose a 40 degree ellipse here, I can set up from our center point the spinner size, or sorry, the propeller size that I'm following. And 
that establishes our aircraft. So hopefully um, that's been helpful in understanding the way to break down an image of something that exists. Now this technique can be applied to anything. So if you draw a side view of a car or of a kettle or of a appliance, um, this grid pattern, this blocking out system is very useful in helping establish a very accurate perspective. And uh, as you saw earlier, I used the same principle, the same aircraft, to create a, um, a different angle. So it's essentially up to you to be able to choose an angle and you're not relying on just copying and tracing from a, um, a photo. Um, a lot of the work that I do is just, this is very tedious and this is very time consuming. I will look at a photo like this and try and replicate it in my sketches. Um, in this instance here, I've been um, uh, very meticulous about setting up the views. A lot of this now comes second nature to me, so I'll be able to draw a perspective like this with these construction lines going on in my mind, and I'm not actually drawing them uh, physically. So, um, yeah, I've, over, over the years I've been able to manage my understanding of the perspective and the standing of ellipses to be able to set up these sort of views. So hopefully that's been useful, and um, I hope you've gained something from it. And uh, I'm looking forward to hearing comments and getting.